Well, grace and peace be multiplied unto you tonight in the name of Jesus the Christ, our Lord and our Savior. It's a blessing to be here with you on tonight. We are excited to be in worship once again. This is the day the Lord has made, and certainly we are uh, glad in this day. Amen. We are to be excited. We are to be elated. And we ought to be glad in this day. I want to welcome each and every one of us tonight by way of prayer line live. Uh, amen. Facebook live. We are grateful for you on tonight. Certainly, uh, we are very, very excited to be in the house of the Lord one more time. This is the Wednesday following the um, fourth Sunday. <laughs> All these weeks are running together. This is the Wednesday following the fourth Sunday. And so this is our Wednesday worship. As a matter of fact, this is our Wednesday worship tonight. Uh, praise God. Um, we tag it as Wednesday worship. Uh, always the Wednesday following the fourth Sunday. And we are here at the Hickory Grove Missionary Baptist Church. 11015. Uh, Gonzales Road, St. Francisville, Louisiana 70775. Glad to be in the service <clears throat> one more time. Don't know about you, but I'm glad to be in the service. I'm glad to be in the service. I'm glad to be in the service one more time. Mm -hmm. He didn't have to let me live. He didn't have to let me live. I'm so glad to be in the service one more time. I'm so glad, glad to be in the service. Glad to be in the service. Glad to be in the service one more time. Oh, didn't have to let me live. Lord, you didn't have to let me live. I'm glad to be in the service. I'm glad to be in the service. I'm glad to be in the service one more time. Hallelujah. Clap those hands. Everybody, if you're glad to be in the service, one more time. Amen. I am glad to be in the service one more time. Amen. Let us invite, invite the Lord in to be with us. All heads about our eyes are closed, our hearts are lifted unto Jesus, our Christ. Eternal God, our Father, we thank you once again. Lord, we thank you. We've been thanking you all day. And Lord, we come again thanking you for this very present moment that you have allowed us to share together. And Lord, now as we go into your word, we ask that you would lead us, God, by your spirit. We need your presence, God. We need to see you. We need to feel you. We need to taste you. God, we thank you tonight. God, we love you. We pray, God, that you would go with us tonight. Lead us in the way that we should go. Tell us what to say, when to say, how to say, what to do. In Jesus' name, open up our understanding, I pray. In the name of Jesus, give us more wisdom and knowledge that we might be able to apply your word into our daily lives. And God, we pray special prayer for all of those who are here and all of those who are on their way to the church in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. Somebody needs to shout amen. Come on, shout amen, brothers and sisters. Let us go to the word of the Lord tonight. Uh, we have an awesome lesson tonight. As always, the Lord has blessed us with a powerful word from heaven. Ephesians chapter 2, turn your Bible, Ephesians chapter number 2, brothers and sisters, the book of Ephesians, Paul's letter to the church at Ephesus, amen, Paul's letter to the church at Ephesus, praise God, and I, um, I developed a system, y'all can use this, um, I developed a system some years ago, uh, to help me uh, with certain books of the Bible to um, help remind me where they are located, you know. And uh, when you look at Galatians, Ephesians, um, 
Philippians and Colossians, uh, that is General Electric Power Company, all right? Y'all can use it. You can use it. It's all right. You can use it. You don't have to pay me for it. It's for free. General Electric Power Company. All right. General Electric Power Company. And you can check it while you got your Bible open. Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians. All right. You got it? All right. But tonight we're in Ephesians. We're in chapter number two. Chapter number two, the book of Ephesians. And uh, we're going to look at, <clears throat> I want to read one verse in our hearing, verse number eight. Verse number eight, for by grace, all right, for by grace, are you saved through faith? And that not of yourselves, y'all with me? Paul is talking about redemption here, okay? For by grace are you saved through faith and not that not of yourselves, watch this, it is the gift of God. It is the gift of God. Tonight, brothers and sisters, we want to talk about your value to God, your value, your, your value to God. Brothers and sisters, we need to know beyond a shadow of a doubt, and we need to understand, uh, we don't need to argue the point, that all of us are valuable to God. All of us, all of us. It does not matter um, what your last name is. It does not matter what your family tree consists of. It does not matter how much money you have in the bank and, and all of that kind of stuff. Amen. It doesn't matter how big your house is and you know, uh, amen, how many cars you got in the driveway. In fact, you don't really need any cars in the driveway, uh, uh, but you need to know this, regardless of all of that, all of us are valuable to God. And uh, the reason we know that we all are valuable to God because God has extended the same privilege to everybody. And he has done it by his grace. He's so full of grace. He's so full of mercy, so full of truth and, and uh, such a giving God. Amen. The Bible says he no respect of persons. He does not um, categorize his children, you know, uh, black, white. We do it. You know, we tend to do that. We tend to place people in certain categories, you know, based on how they look and how much money they have and what they can do for us. But but aren't you glad that God is not like that? I'm so excited when I think about uh, the fact that God cares as much uh, for the one who's sleeping on the park bench uh, at night, does not have a roof over his head, the one slept in the ditch, come on, the one that went to bed hungry. God cares for that individual as much as he cares uh, for somebody else, for somebody with money, for somebody with a big house and uh, that has five, six, seven bedrooms and all that stuff. Uh, God, uh, amen, loves all of us. God has placed value um, in all of us. <clears throat> and he did it because he's so full of grace. All right, write that down. He's so full of grace. Now, as we look at this verse number eight, um, that I want to identify two key words that probably have never been identified as such in this verse. I want to identify two key words. There are several key words in this verse, okay? There are several key words in this verse, but I want to pull out two key words that are not easily detectable. They are not easily recognizable. Are you with me tonight? I want to pull out these two key words, and here they are. They're going to blow your mind. Get ready. Are you ready? These two words are going to blow your mind. Amen. Because I'm sure you have not seen them, because I've never seen them as key words until I was preparing this lesson. I'm so serious with you. Here it is, the word by and the word through. Write that down. Those two words are key words among others. Amen. Because let, let's face it, uh, you know, 
customarily, you know, we look at the word grace and faith, all right, as keywords, even perhaps the word gift as keywords in this verse, but, but the word by, by, and the word through, those are keywords that I want to pull out of, of this verse. Now, let me, let, me let me give you the amplified version of this verse. The ampli I just gave you the King James version. Let me give you the amplified Bible, uh, uh, amplified version. This salvation is not of yourselves. You with me? This salvation is not of yourselves or of your own doing. That's what it means. When it said not of yourself, it means that you did nothing to receive it. Everything that was done in order for you and I to receive the free gift from God, which is Jesus, by the way. Jesus is the gift, all right? Everything was done, right, was done by Jesus. Jesus is the gift, right? And the gift was given by himself. He gave himself. Are you with me? So this salvation is not of yourselves or of your own doing. It came not through your own striving, all right? But it is the gift of God. That's the amplified, okay? Now, I already gave you the King James Version. We need to understand, my brothers and sisters, that these two words are very key in this verse because Paul says here to the church at Ephesus, as he began to talk about redemption, watch this here, Paul says, for by grace. He didn't say now, he could have said grace. He could have really begun this verse by saying, uh, grace is what saved you. Amen. Grace is our grace is what gave you uh, your salvation. Amen. Through your faith. But Paul says, for by grace, by. Amen. By mean, by mean, what's it? By mean. Or by indicates, the word by indicate the one who did it. Are you with me? By. By tells us who or what performed this act. Grace did it. Okay. So, so it was by grace. Now, grace is unmerited favor. Write that down. Grace is unmerited favor. Grace is when we receive something that we did not deserve. There it is, right? Grace, that's grace. Grace is receiving something. Now, we, you and I, we didn't deserve. We don't even deserve to be alive right now. We didn't deserve to wake up this morning, but we did. Come on. We didn't deserve to go about the cares of this day, but we did. Amen? Amen. We didn't deserve, really didn't deserve to be clothed in our right mind, but we are. Come on. We, didn't deserve, we don't deserve to have the activity of our limbs, but we do. And it's all done by grace. You with me? So, so by is a key word and also the word through, through faith. Through is the medium. When you say, when you see the word through, it indicates the medium by which something was done. It was done through faith. It wasn't just done, but it was done through faith. Come on. Paul could have left that out now. Paul, but the Holy Spirit has left Paul. Paul could have said, by grace, your, your salvation came. That's it. He could have left it at that. But Paul said, no, by grace are you saved. Watch this. Through faith. Faith in what or who? Faith in Jesus the Christ. Faith, Jesus is the object of our faith. Are you with me? Because it was through him. He's the one that died. He's the one that gave himself. Amen. As a ransom for so many. So what that's uh, basically mean to us, my brothers and sisters, is amen. Tonight is that. You know, when I get to it, I'm getting excited. But it's a good lesson. Amen. Very good lesson. Amen. We need to understand it now. Uh, some, and, and, and the reality, watch this here, the Holy Spirit dropped this in me as I prepared the lesson. Another thing he dropped in me as I prepared the lesson and doing my study of the lesson in preparation, the Holy Spirit said, there are so many people, watch this here, I got to tell you what he told me to tell you. There are so many people that have already accepted their salvation. Watch this. They're saved, sanctified on the way to heaven, but they do not completely understand how it came to be. Mm, Lord have mercy. So Paul says to the church in Ephesus, 
by grace through faith. Y'all with me? By grace through faith. By grace. What is grace? Unmerited favor. Grace is the goodness of God. Lord have mercy. The goodness of God. God is so good. Watch this here. God is so good that he allowed you to pass through uh, uh, the, 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 the place where the accident took place. God is so full of grace, he allowed you to pass through that point before the accident took place. <laughs> or, 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 or God allowed you to pass through after the accident took place. He's so full of grace. Grace is the goodness of God. And Paul says, are you saved through faith? Okay, faith in Jesus. So we need to understand that, that we're valuable to God. We're talking tonight about our value, our value to God. You know, all of us are valuable. Uh, people would tend to try and convince you that you're not valuable to God based on something you've done, some, you know, uh, some sin you've committed. You know, and by all means, we're not encouraging you to go out and commit sin, but but we, we're just saying what we're saying. What we are simply saying is that uh, in spite of our sinful nature, in spite of the sin that we uh, committed and, and continue to commit in some cases, um, God still wakes us up in the morning. Amen. And you know, the reality in that we, you know, we, we look for God to do so much in the course of a day. But but if God wake you up, that's enough. <laughs> Lord, I mean, y'all got to, I'm getting excited. Listen, if, 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 if he wake you up, that's it. That's enough. Come on. Amen. That's why I don't, I don't understand people say, I've had a bad day today. You breathing. How you had a bad day? <laughs> you above the ground. Come on, y'all. Come on, how you, come on, come on, come on with me now. We're going somewhere tonight. How, how, come on, if you say it, come on, just, hey, don't get mad. We get mad. Come on, the word, you know, the word will do that. The word will step on all of our toes from time to time. And the enemy will even cause you to believe, watch it. The enemy will cause you to believe um, that if something not so good, you know, if you, you presented with a challenge in the beginning of the day, you know, around 8 o'clock, 7.30, 8 o'clock, and you presented with a challenge, something happened that's not so good. You get you you informed of some bad news or, or whatever, and and then the enemy will put in your mind. The enemy will tell you this whole day is messed up. You are gonna have a bad day today. Tell your neighbor the devil is a lie and the truth is not in him. Amen. But we need to understand how God sees us. Okay, on an individual basis. Uh, in order to understand how God sees you, uh, how God sees you, uh, you need to try and think of two things. All right, we need to look at two things. I'm going to present two analogies um, to you tonight. The first one is a dollar bill. All right, if you got a dollar bill in your pocket, pull it out right now. Pull it out, I want you to look at it. Oh, y'all big money people, y'all ain't got no little dollar bill, do you? <laughs> y'all got 20s and hundreds. I know, I know, amen. You ain't gonna admit it, amen. <laughs> somebody say, amen. Somebody say, I don't deal with no dollars, amen. <laughs> I don't deal with fives and ten. I deal with 20s, amen, and $100 bills, amen. But, 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 but watch this. Um, when you look at a dollar bill, What makes, what makes a dollar bill more valuable than any other piece of paper of equal size? Okay, if you cut out, uh, if you trace a dollar bill over a piece of um, typing paper or whatever, construction paper, whatever you want to call it, if you do your trace, you know, trace the outer, the outer perimeter of a dollar bill and you, after you trace, Remove the dollar bill and then you cut, you cut that piece out, okay? What makes a dollar bill 
more valuable than that piece you cut out. It's the same size. Amen. You know what makes it more valuable? The, the wealth and the stability of the United States government whose government, whose signature is on it. Amen. You can even crumple that dollar bill up. You can ball it up, crumple it up. You can step on it. You can, you can tear it into pieces if you want to. Now, if you tear it into pieces, you can't spin it. You know? but, so I advise you not to do that. Amen. Uh, uh, but after, if, if you do tear it to pieces, you could tape it back together. And it's still worth the same amount. Why? Because of the signature that's on it. Stop by here tonight to tell you on my way to heaven uh, that you're valuable to God because Jesus' signature is on you. Write it down. Jesus is, Jesus signed his name on, come on, talk to me. When he died on the cross, amen. Uh, I wish I had help up in here. And, and, and the moment you gave your life to God, you walk down the aisle or whatever the case may be. You don't have to walk down the aisle necessarily. We just we say that, but amen. I want the Bible don't say that. Bible don't say you got to walk down the aisle to be saved. We just do it that way in the local church. We do it that way. You won't be saved. You're unsaved. And, and we make the appeal. Come on. It's, it's just customary that you walk down the aisle. Amen. And um, amen. Give your life to the Lord. And you, you confess uh, with your mouth and, and that you believe in your heart that Jesus died for you. Right? At that very moment, Jesus' signature is on you. That will make you valuable. Come on. That will make you valuable to God. Y'all with me? And the second thing I want you to look at, look at Dollar Bill. Second analogy I want to present to you, or to present to us tonight, is a diamond. A diamond. You know, a diamond is a, a precious stone, very expensive, right? Amen. Um, but if you take the diamond and rub it in the dirt, whoo! Oh, have mercy. Rub it in the dirt and it's still a diamond. It might be dirty, but it's a diamond. <laughs> Stay with me, somebody. Amen. But it's still a diamond. Amen. It has not lost its value. Come on. Just because it's dirty don't, don't mean that it has lost its value. Brothers and sisters, uh, sometimes in this life we get dirty, don't we? Come on. Come on. We get dirty. We get dirty with sin. We get dirty with all kind of mess we get entangled in, but we're still valuable to God. Amen. Now, we must admit the fact uh, and point out the fact that in order to truly appreciate the beauty of a diamond, uh, you, you you would need to you would need to get off get get the dirt off of it. I, amen. Amen. To, to really to truly appreciate the beauty of it. You need to get the dirt off and clean it up and then restore it back to its original look, its original, uh, uh, the way it originally looked. Amen, before, you, before it got dirty. But the value never changes, even in the dirt, even full of dirt, full of mess. Brothers and sisters, we are valuable to God. And the reason that we are valuable to God is if we can see it in verse eight, simply because by grace through faith. By grace, we're saved through faith. Now, the grace has to do with God. Watch this. And the faith has to do with you and I. There it is. Oh, I'm going to make it plain now. Amen. The, write that down. The grace concerns God. The grace comes from God. Amen. But the faith concerns you. The faith concerns me. Amen. The faith comes from me. The grace comes from God. The faith comes from you and I. Faith in who or what? Faith in Jesus the Christ and what he did on the cross. So what is the significance of these two illustrations? What is the point we're trying to make um, tonight is that your value in God's eyes as his redeemed child never changes. It never diminishes. 
regardless of what you go through, regardless of what you're faced with, regardless of the challenges and um, the trials, um, the things that we are, have to endure on a daily basis, uh, you know, regardless of what we've done wrong. See, see, Peter, let me thank you, Holy Spirit. See, out of all that Peter did uh, that was wrong, stay with me, stay with me. He was still valuable to God. That's why God used him on the day of Pentecost to preach the, preach the first message in the new church, in the New Testament church. When God literally gave birth to the new church, and I say new church, the New Testament church, amen. The church that Jesus had built. Are you with me? Amen. After the first time assembly, uh, 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 post Jesus, after Jesus, post ascension, and not post resurrection, but post ascension. Stay with me. Post ascension, after Jesus had ascended back to the Father. And remember, Jesus had given them very, very clear instructions. He said to them, Don't leave Jerusalem to the comfort to show up. Oof. Lord have mercy. In other words, what he was saying here now, you can leave here if you want to before your help come, but you're going to be on your own. Hello, somebody. Amen. And the Bible said it was Peter. Peter is the one who stood and preached the message that day. Come on. After all he had done, he had denied even knowing Jesus. Lord have mercy. How can you deny knowing the Savior and still be valuable to God? You know how? By his grace. <laughs> By Write it down. You're not writing. You, you on the prayer line. I'm talking to you. You ain't writing, baby. Write it down. Somebody say, I know that, write it anyway. Ah, I wish I had somebody. I wish I had somebody who take good notes tonight. Amen. Facebook, type it in. Say, type it in Facebook, say, I'm valuable to God. Type it in. Type it in. Say, I'm valuable to the Lord. I have value with God. Come on. Talk about the value. That's why we presented the analogy of a dollar bill and, and um, and, and a diamond, amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. You ball it up, you ball that bad boy up and, and throw it around and you know, do all this stuff. It's still a it's still it's still a dollar bill. Come on. Amen. And so um we need to know that in the eyes of God, as a redeemed child of God, not just anybody now. But as a redeemed, amen, blood washed, come on, blood washed. I know it was the blood, come on, I know, come on, blood washed. It was the blood, I know it was the blood for me. One day when I was lost, he died on the cross. And I know it was blood. And I know, come on, blood wash. Blood wash. As a redeemed, blood wash, bought believer. Blood wash, blood bought. Do you know who the, you were bought with the blood? Come on. Write that down. Bought with the blood. Lord, that's another sermon. Jesus. Ooh, hope y'all keeping track of this. <laughs> I'm going to preach some of this stuff. God gave me a sermon all through the lesson. I think God gave me a sermon earlier today at 12 noon. We are doing simply the word. Amen. I hope somebody wrote down because I didn't. <laughs> Amen. Come on. Bought. As a blood wash, bought believer. Amen. I value uh, in God's eyes now. Not in people. Ooh, that's a good point. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Not in the eyes of people now, because when you mess up, you, you, your, value, your value decreases with people. 
Y'all don't tell the truth. Come on, some folks don't have nothing to do with you, you mess up. They won't have nothing to do with you. It's a shame how people do. <laughs> they don't want to have nothing to do with you as if they never mess up. Come on. Come on, talk to me. Talk back to the preacher. Come on. Some folk don't, amen, your value. You know why? It's because your value. You ever heard somebody say, I don't want to have nothing to do with her. I don't want to have nothing to do with him. Amen. You riding in the car with Johnny, <clears throat> and Johnny say, um, you're on the way to the store with Johnny, you in the car, you on the passenger side, in the car with Johnny, and, um, and Johnny say, uh, and uh, let's say your name is John, okay? <laughs> you know, we gotta, give it, we gotta use common names, we want nobody to get mad, you know? Um, Johnny, you and John is in the car with Johnny, and they on the way to the ball game, and, and Johnny says, um, Johnny looks over to John and says, um, hey, John, um, we got a little time. We, we're not going to be late for the game. Look, I'm going to stop over here at, uh, at Michael's house for a moment and uh, just say hello to him. I don't want to speak to Michael because his house is on the way to the game, you know. And Johnny says, I'm going to pull over here and just, just holler at Mike. You know Mike. Uh, you, know, you know our friend we went to school with, whatever. You know Mike. I'm going to just stop over here and talk to Mike, speak to him right quick. And, and John, John looks back at Johnny and said, well, look, you can go in and speak. I'm staying in the car because I don't want to have nothing to do with him. Amen. Hey, come on. And Johnny says to John, John said, man, what's up, man? What, what happened? What has he done to you? And he said, he did me wrong two weeks ago. I don't want to have nothing to do with him. I'm through with him. You know why? You know what caused John to say that? Here's my point. You know what causes John to make that statement? is because Michael's value in his eyes has decreased. He does, not see, he does not see Michael the same way he once saw him. Y'all missing me tonight. Amen. And it's, and it's very, watch this. I'm going to say this and move on because I don't want to lose nobody. I don't, make nobody. I don't care about making you mad, but I don't want to make you too mad. <laughs> Amen. Let me say this. It's prevalent in the church. Oh, yes, it is. In the not talking about a local church now. I'm talking about in the body of Christ. It's prevalent in the body. Yes, it is. I wish I had a nickel for every time I've heard that. I'd be pretty well, well off right now. Amen. I don't want to have to do nothing to do with him. Amen. I don't want to have nothing to do with her. Come on, y'all. Aren't you glad God is not like man? Aren't you glad that our value doesn't ever decrease or diminish in the eyes of God? God still sees us as his child. Now, I mean, you know, we, you know, we got to pay for sin. Now, don't get me wrong. I want to make sure I clarify that point. You know, we commit sin. We got to pay for that. as a price to pay. Okay, you do wrong now. You got, you got to answer to God. But that doesn't change your value in his eyes. You, you understand? He still loves you. You still worth the same to him. Come on. Amen. And so sometimes even um, when we get dirty in life and, and when we're stepped on and torn apart and, and uh, all of that by life and life circumstances, we need to always understand that we're still valuable to God. And it is, it is so because, uh, because of what Paul says in verse 8, chapter 2 of his letter to the church at Ephesus. By grace are we saved through faith. And it's basically because, brothers and sisters, um, your true worth is determined not by your own efforts, y'all with me? But your true worth is determined by the price Jesus paid for you. You gotta make it personal, I'm pointing at you. See my, my finger <laughs> pointing at you? Then I turn around pointing at me. Amen, but I'm pointing at you right now because I'm talking to you. 
Then I turn around point at me because I'm talking to me. Y'all with me? Your true worth is not determined by your own efforts, but your true worth is determined for, by, by the price Jesus paid for you. Well, I keep saying you, because I want you to know that what he did at Calvary, he did it for you. Amen. On the cross. So, you know, it, it, it was at the cross that the great exchange took place. At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light and the burdens of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith. I received my sight, and now I'm happy all the day. Say it with me one time. At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light and the burden. Oh, what happens? And the burden of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith. See, there it is. Faith. I received. See, it takes faith. You gotta have faith. That's what Paul said. By grace through faith. Identify if you're just walking in the church. We identified earlier. Two key words in verse eight that are not normally uh, detected, that's a good word, as key words. The word by and the word through. By grace. By tells us who did it or what did it. Through tells us the medium of which make, what makes it necessary. Come on. Faith is necessary. Lord, Emmers, write that down. There's another sermon, the necessity of faith. Come on, preachers. If you're preaching now, I'm helping y'all just like I'm helping me. Now, y'all can preach some of this. Go on and preach it. Amen. I don't care. Preach it. God, amen. We're supposed to help one another. Come on. That we, that's what we're here for, to help one another. The necessity of faith. And, and you can tag this text right here. Verse eight, preach it, prepare it, pray about it, preach it. The necessity of faith, Lord have mercy. Mm. God give me so many sermons in the course of a day. I'm so serious with you. <laughs> There's another, he gave me three today already. For by grace, are we saved? Are you saved through faith? So at the cross, all that, the last 10 minutes for, was to help me make this one statement. At the cross, the great exchange took place. There it is. All of our sins from the cradle to the grave were laid on the shoulders of Jesus. The Bible says, he who knew no sin bore the sins of the world upon his shoulder. Yes, he did. he did. He didn't know sin. Jesus didn't know what sin felt like. That's what, it, that's what that verse means, that he, he, that, he that knew no sin, um, it, it means that, mean that he didn't know what it, he don't even know what it felt like. He don't know. And, and also it means that he had never committed sin. Jesus Christ was sinless. You with me? But he's willing to take on the whole, the sins of the whole world so that uh, man could be redeemed back unto God. Amen. See, we was bought. We bought as a believer, but we was bought with a price. That was a price that had to be paid. Come on. And Jesus paid, oh my God. Jesus.
Jesus paid it all, all to him I owe. Y'all remember that one? <laughs> Hallelujah. He paid it all. Amen. All of our sins from the cradle to the grave at Calvary were laid on him. And when we accept him, that him is Jesus, as our Lord and Savior, all of his righteousness is now transferred to us. That's why we say the great exchange took place. We gave him our sins. Watch this. We get, do your hand like this. Do like that, Facebook, do like that. We gave him our sins. He gave us, yeah, do your hand like that. He gave us his righteousness. Are y'all with me? Let's do it again. Y'all ready? Got to, you know, it's good to exercise when you're Bible class because you just kind of just sit there, you know, not moving. It's good to kind of work a little bit. All right, y'all ready to work? Amen. We gave Jesus our sins. And then he gave us, amen, his righteousness. Y'all got that? So that's, that's, that's the great exchange. Write that down, that's the great exchange. That's the great exchange that took place. I hope y'all working Facebook. I hope you're working now. Got to work, prayer line. Amen. It's a greater challenge with you, prayer line. Because can't nobody see you but God. So I hope you're taking good note. You, you should have. If you're on the prayer line right now, let me just go and say this. If you're on the prayer line right now, and you're not driving or you know at work or doing something that you know that that will prevent you from from doing so. If, if you're just sitting there in your home or you know your kitchen table, your living room, whatever. If you're just sitting there, and I'm and I'm thankful you that I'm thankful you're sitting there. Don't get me wrong. I'm trying to run nobody off. I ain't trying to run nobody off. But I gotta say it. If you're just sitting there and you're not taking notes, amen, I, I strongly encourage you to, amen, because, because that, that's why it's called Bible class, you know, or, 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 you know, or Sunday school, you know, it's, yeah, it, come on, you go to school, you take notes, you go to class, you take notes, why I call it Sunday school. You should be taking notes all through Sunday school. You should be taking notes all through Bible class. Amen. I'm just trying to help somebody. I'm just trying to help somebody. Not trying to hurt your feeling, run your, you know, some for some folks, they don't need much to be run off. Now, they, I'm gone. They just take every slightest little thing and they twist it and I ain't going no more. <laughs> he said somebody like, I, no, baby, you, you know, you just twisted it. All I'm doing is just encouraging you. That's all. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord because uh, it, it's a known fact that that when you write something down, you tend to retain it better. Amen. So that's why, you know, one of my favorite phrases that I, uh, amen, coined uh, here, that, well, not here, but uh, in our prayer ministry, simply the word uh, 10 years ago, amen, uh, I coined that phrase, write that down, amen, write it down, amen. you got to write it down, you got to write it down. So brothers and sisters, uh, once again, as we as we get ready to, to, to we got a few more minutes, you got about 10 more minutes, we try to close out about 10 after, uh, so we have a few minutes to lift our offering and make the appeal for discipleship and, and stuff like that and make a few announcements, amen, and that way we can try to be out by 715, all right, amen. So, so let me make this statement again of what happened at the cross. A great exchange took place at the cross, okay. We gave Jesus our sins. We do an exercise again. And he bore them on his shoulder. And then he turned around and gave us his righteousness. Amen. I don't know about you, but that's a pretty good deal. Huh? So we got the righteousness of God. We have the privilege and, and we have access to the righteousness of God and we didn't have to do anything for it. By grace. It's in the text. Verse 8, Ephesians 2. By 
grace are you saved, watch this, through faith. and not of yourselves. In other words, you didn't do anything uh, uh, to get it. It's none of us, write this down, it's none of us, but all of him, write it down. It's none of us, it's all of him. It is the gift of God. That, that's, that's to close out that verse. It is the gift of God, meaning that we don't have to work for it because it's a gift. Amen. Christmas time, birthdays, and all that stuff. You know, y'all y'all give gifts, or shall I say, we give gifts. You know, and 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 that's what it is. That's a gift. That the person that you're giving it to, whatever you're giving, uh, they didn't work for the gift. You just giving them a gift because it's their birthday. Amen. You have to work for it. It's a gift. Amen. And so. Whenever we see the word gift in the Bible, I want to make this note. I, I kind of alluded to this earlier, but I want to really labor here for a moment. Whenever we uh, see the word gift in the Bible, whenever the word uh, gift is used in scripture, God is referring to his son, Jesus. The gift. Jesus was and still is and will always be the gift. Amen. The Lord gave us his only begotten son, John 3, 16. Amen. Whosoever believeth upon him would not perish, but would have everlasting life. God gave us Jesus as a gift. God literally, here we are on Facebook again. Facebook, you got an advantage because you can see my hands and my motions tonight. This is what God did to us as he was holding his son, here we go. He literally extended his son to us, here you go. You can have him. Amen. Here's your gift. Come on. <laughs> Amen. You don't have to work for it. And, 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 and after God gave the gift, this is what he said. This is in my own word. After God gave us the gift now, which is Jesus, this is what he said. He said, now, you don't have to work for the gift. All I need you to do now is commit your life to him. Good God. That's it. That's it. Turn everything over to him. Everything. Amen. Somebody say amen. Say amen right there. Turn everything over to him. So, 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 so Paul says here, Paul says here in verse 8, this salvation is not of yourselves. It is, in other words, it's not of your own doing. You didn't do anything for it. It came not through your own striving. Remember, I presented that word earlier from the Amplified. It's not for your own, it's not because of your, it came not through your own striving, but it is the gift of God. All right? So whenever we see the word gift, now you won't remember that now. Don't forget that. Whenever, because the word is, gift is used throughout, you know, various places, especially in the New Testament. And you see that word, you'll know from now on that that word, Holy Spirit is referring to Jesus. Jesus is the gift. He's speaking, God is speaking of, God is speaking through his spirit because we know that all scripture was given and inspired by God. Amen. We give Paul the credit for the books that he wrote, but, but Paul was just being used by the Holy Spirit. He was just used by God. We give David credit for much of the psalm, the writing of psalm, but, but it's really not David. All scripture was given by God. Are y'all with me? Moses, we give Moses credit for the first five books of the Bible. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy, which are the five, uh, for the five books of the law, amen, or the five books of the Pentateuch, amen, which are, which are in essence parallel, stay with me, to the five books in the writing of Psalms. Psalm only have five books. 
Amen. Psalm has no chapters. But Psalm, the, the writing of Psalm, the, the writing of Psalm is composed or consists of five books. Five, a Psalm has numbers, no chapters. And in those numbers are verses, but there are no chapters. Amen. So when we when we say uh, we get ready to read scripture, uh, amen, from, from the writing of Psalm, we, we, we should not say, uh, uh, turn your Bible to Psalm chapter one. Because there are no chapters. I'm trying to figure out what chapter, what chapter you're talking about. I don't know you, but you say you say Psalm number one, verse whatever. Amen. Come on, somebody. Just trying to help us. You know, we can now I have not always known that. Y'all with me? And there's some other stuff I don't know now. Come on. I ain't too many preachers gonna say that, but I, I'm gonna say it. <laughs> too many pastors gonna admit that, man. There's a whole lot I don't know. Come on. That's why, that's why I love to go to school, go to class. I learn. Come on. Always learning. I wanna learn something. Jesus Christ. Teach me, Holy Ghost. Teach me something today. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise God. Praise his holy name. Uh, amen. So, so we get ready to close out, brothers and sisters. We got about five more minutes of, of teaching here. Um, amen. God is referring to Jesus when he uses the word gift. And watch this. It's a good place to close. Not only is he referring to Jesus, but he's always also referring to his substitutionary work. That is a word, by the way. Sometimes, <laughs> sometimes, sometimes I may use, say something that's really not a word, you know, something I just made up, you know. <laughs> I make up a word now, <laughs> And then I tell you to call Webster and tell him to include it, uh, amen, to supplement uh, his dictionary and just add that word. But but this, this, is, this already is a word. <laughs> I didn't have to make this substitutionary work of Jesus. What, what do you mean, preacher? I'm glad you asked. Jesus performed a work at Calvary that was a substitutionary work. What does that mean? That means that he really shouldn't have been on the cross, but he was. He's, he, he offered himself, himself as a substitute for us. He didn't deserve... Oh, are y'all with me? He had done nothing wrong. That's why Pilate said, I find no fault. Y'all remember? Y'all remember? Pilate knew. Pilate said, I, I, don't, I don't find no fault in man. Y'all, I've been listening to y'all all this time, all night. Y'all been bringing this man from judgment hall to judgment hall. You brought him to me, then you took him to King Herod, then you brought him back to me, all that stuff. And out of everything y'all have said, I still can't find a fault in him. So Pilate said, I'm washing my hand with the matter. Do what you want to do. Jesus was offered as a substitute. So that makes his work substitutionary. See if you can spell that on Facebook. <laughs> Amen. Somebody type it in. Substitutionary work on the cross. Which, which makes all of this possible. This life that we live possible. We would not be here today if it were not for the substitutionary as you can tell, as you can tell, I kind of like the word. <laughs> I've said it about five times. <laughs> if, if you hadn't noticed yet, I, I, I kind of like that one. <laughs> You'll be hearing that one again, I'm sure. <laughs> the, the substitutionary. Oh, sub substitutionary work. of Jesus and in effort and, and he was successful 
in an effort to redeem man back unto God. Mm -hmm. So tonight, my brothers and sisters, as we get ready to close tonight, Lord, as we get ready to go home tonight, I want to remind you that you are valuable to God. Yes, the reason you're valuable all because of the, the substitutionary work of Jesus the Christ, all because Lord, what he did at Calvary. Paul said, by grace, <laughs> Lord Jesus, by grace, are you saved through faith? <laughs> so God extended his grace on us. And the only thing we need is to exercise faith in Jesus. Good God Almighty. I'm closing the night when I tell somebody, hold on to the Lord's unchanging hand. Walk by faith and not by sight. Walk on, walk on, oh, walk on. Yeah, walk on, walk on, walk on, walk on by faith. Yeah, walk on. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Let me let y'all go. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. I, I, I just, I just had to celebrate that, uh, that text. I had to celebrate it on the end. I hope you did not mind. God bless you tonight. God bless you for for being here and staying here uh, in worship tonight. We have had a time. And if you just walked in the church, just got on the prayer line, or you just walked in the church by way of Facebook, what have you, uh, go back, go back and, and listen, amen, and, and get the meat of the message on Facebook, amen. Uh, if you want the audio file, let us know, let us know. We got the audio file, we'll send it to your phone, come on. Yes, we will, we'll do it, we'll do it. You, you need all of this message. Tell your neighbor. They say, neighbor, you was late. It ain't my business why you was late, but I need to tell you something. You need all of this. <laughs> you know, you can't ask for why they were late. They get mad. <laughs> they get attitude. Amen. Yeah, they do. Amen. Praise God. Love y'all so much. The door of the church is open. The door of the church is open. We extend the liberty of the church uh, tonight. Um, we make this discipleship appeal virtually. Uh, praise God, and um, uh, if there's any, there's no better time, you know, to come to God than 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 now. You know, um, tomorrow's not promised. The very next second is not promised. If you don't know the Lord, if you never accepted the free gift of salvation, Amen. Our lesson tonight, talking about our value to God. If you've never accepted the free gift of salvation, we've talked extensively about that. You should do so now. All you have to do, let me ask you a question. Do you believe that Jesus died for you? You answer yes. All right. All right. Now, do you confess it with your mouth? Do you believe it in your heart? Is your answer yes? Okay. All right. Well, um, that's it. That's it. The Bible says, according to Romans 10 and 9, you're saved. Amen. You're saved. Just that, I know you're saying that's it. Yeah, that's it. Amen. Now you need a church. You need a church where you can be fed the word. You can grow in the word. Come on. We would love to have you here at Hickory Grove Missionary Baptist Church. We would love to have you at the McEwen Church. Um, don't matter to me, you know, uh, even if you want to go to another church, local church, amen. Um, everybody needs a church, home. Everybody needs a pastor. Got so many people floating around. How could you float around in a pandemic? That's what I want to know. Y'all help me out. 
all last year floated people just floating around just no church no pastor i don't get it i don't get it <laughs> you know you know the young people say i get that well i don't get that <laughs> amen i don't get that you need a church baby you need a pastor it don't have to be me now I would love for it to be me. Don't get me wrong, but it don't have to be me. It don't have to. Amen. Lord lead you somewhere else. Go there. Ain't no love lost. Amen. No love lost. But we want to extend this invitation tonight. We love you in the Lord. We want to lift our offering tonight. Um, Cash app is Hickory Grove MBC. Hickory Grove MBC is the cash app. You need McEwen. It is McEwen BC. Tonight, we're at Hickory Grove, amen. So we push all of our offering to that church tonight, but uh, it may be some members on the line or what have you want to sow a seed, need to sow a seed into the McEwen Church, you can do that as well. Uh, we have PO boxes at both churches, all right? Uh, both of the mailing addresses are Jackson, Louisiana, 70748. Hickory Grove is PO Box 1721, amen, 1721. Now, if you put St. Francisville for the mailing, it's going to go to it's going to go to the Magnolia Full Gospel Baptist Church, Pastor Milton Goats, because they have the exact same PO box in St. Francisville. Amen. And I love that man of God. I love him so much. I have so much respect for him. Uh, as a matter of fact, um, a piece of mail went. It was a business piece of mail, not from a member. It was a business piece of mail that went. Um, accidentally, whoever it was, sent it there because they had St. Francisville. And the man of God called me. He didn't have to call me. Hmm. My God. He called me. That means something. He called me. Little old me. <laughs> Amen. And explained it to me. And he said, man of God, I'm putting it in the mail to you. Uh, rerouting it to you. Just want to let you know um, with the situation, amen. I just wanted to say that because I don't overlook little small gestures of love. I really don't, amen. Uh, McEwen P.O. Box is P.O. Box 1481 Jackson. 1481 Jackson. The Grove is P.O. Box 1721 Jackson, right? All right. Now, we also have text to give. You can text the word Grove to 99000. You're writing 99000. That's the number you text to, but you text the word Grove to that number 99000. And you can give very safely and securely right from your smartphone, debit or credit card. Amen. You could text the word McEwen to the same number and do the same thing. Are you with me? All right. My cash app, Buck Glenn King. Buck Glenn King. Whenever I think about it, I like to give it. Because whenever I don't give it, somebody texts me and says, what, what is your quick question? So what is your cash here? So I give it. Amen. So everybody have it. Buck Blinking. Love y'all so much. Listen, let's remain in prayer with Brother Charlie Minor and uh, Sister Geneva Davenport. Amen. And families, right? Mother Chris, Mother Sarah, Minister Mary Pickett. All of these are local mem members of our local church. And Deaconess Bernice Livius, and the list goes on. Amen. The list goes on and on. Let's keep Brother Henry London in prayer. Praise God. Amen. Thank God he's been doing pretty good lately. Uh, but amen. We know that uh, he's on dialysis every week and all that. So uh, I can't even imagine what that's like. What that's like. Amen. But, but I know God is able. God is keeping him keeping him on this perfect keeping care. All right. So brothers and sisters, um, I'm getting ready to try and let you go here. I want to say to our members of our local church, we will be having our family focus this week. You know the day, you know the time. We'll be looking for you um, on the prayer line. That Brian that you know the day, you know the time. We're looking for you on the prayer line. All right. Family focus time just for our local our members of our local church to come together and fellowship. Amen. So call around, let everybody know um, that, um, that you'll be looking for them in the house. All right. Uh, let us continue to pray for this nation and this world and this country. 
Uh, we are standing in the need of a healing. We need it bad. Only one can do it is God. That's it. Nobody else. No one can heal the land but God. This land is sick. This land is in trouble. God is able to fix it all. We just need to trust in him. And we need to line up with his word. Come on. We got to line up with his word. Amen. His will and his way. Love you all so much. Uh, let us continue to pray for Brother James Brooks in Columbus, Georgia, part of our prayer ministry. And um, amen. So many uh, names I could call, but, um, but we're just grateful tonight to be uh, in a position where we can pray. Prayer is a privilege. Amen. I want you to meet me uh, Friday morning, um, 8.15 a.m. on this same prayer line, also on Simply The Word Church Facebook page, 8.15 for our Friday morning worship service uh, every Friday, every Tuesday and Friday morning, 8.15, amen, for, for 10 years now. We'll celebrate 10 years, by the way. You'll be hearing more about that as we move on a little bit uh, closer to the end of April, first part of May, which is in time we will celebrate, we'll celebrate that time, amen. Formally celebrate that entire weekend. Praise the name of the Lord. And so brothers and sisters, um, we're, we're also pushing our way to Sunday morning, nine o'clock, amen. For our Holy Communion worship service, uh, I wanna remind you to have your cracker and your juice or whatever, ready, amen, um, so that we can partake of the body and the blood of Jesus the Christ together. We, we may have, depending on the weather, we may have an outdoor worship on the second Sunday in uh, March, in, in uh, yeah, am I right? Yeah, March. <laughs> uh, we may have, um, but of course, I'll let you know in due time. Amen. Depending on the weather now. It's getting a little warmer now. I don't know if it's going to stay warm, but um, and it depends on the rain forecast as well. So let us uh, remain connected so that we can be informed of everything that's going on, be aware of everything that's going on. Love you all so much in the Lord. There's nothing you can do about it. Meet us every day, 12 o'clock noon, every day, every day on the prayer line for our 62nd National Prayer Call. We are fasting. We are praying. This is our consecration month. I'm trying to rush and get off here, let you go. We, this, this is our March consecration. Um, I remember what you have to do. Remember that uh, those things you should be fasting away from and praying and studying the book of Proverbs and all of that this entire month, one chapter of Proverbs per day is what we're looking at, amen. 31 chapters in Proverbs, 31 days in the month of March. Are you with me? All right, I believe we got it now, amen. Also our first fruit offering, $221, praise God. Go ahead and sow that seed if you have not done so, sow it into the kingdom of God. The Bible says, honor the Lord with your substance and with the first fruit of your increase, that your barns be filled with plenty and that your vats would overflow with new wine. Let me let you go. Love you in the Lord. God bless you now. May the grace of God, the love of Jesus Christ, and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide with us now, his forth and forevermore, as we come down from this place, but never to leave the presence of God. Love you so much. God bless you, and God keep you. Have a great night in Jesus' name. Amen.